Hey everyone! In today's video, I wanted to share some tips on how to make your paintings look more magical. If you follow me, you know that I love working on paintings and drawings that look kind of dreamy, and I'm greatly inspired by fairy tales. I'm constantly looking for ways to make my illustrations look more dreamy and ethereal, and these are some of the things I implement into my digital paintings that I've learned along the way and I think could be beneficial for you if you are looking to have a very dreamy nostalgic feel for your own work. First off, I wanted to say that if you enjoy this painting process, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more content. I love to talk about my tips and experiences with you because I'm also learning along the way how to be the best illustrator and business owner as I can be, and I'm completely self-taught, so these are just things that work for me and I'd like to teach you. Secondly, if you would like to further support me, you can for sure follow me on Instagram at Sotokatepas to see my drawings and paintings that I'm working on. And if you want to like really, really support me, you can become a patron to see full-time versions of my YouTube videos, step-by-step -step process posts, and even get exclusive limited edition monthly postcards and sticker packs. Currently, I have more than 30 process videos available to view and to learn from, and this painting is also one of the real-time process videos that is already up on my Patreon. Before we begin talking about the painting and my tips, I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, which is my favorite brand, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives like you and me. There are classes on business design, photography, illustration, and more. There are quite literally thousands of inspiring classes on any topic you can really think of that you'd like to improve. and. All of them come with a combination of video lessons and a class project that can be hands-on and you can learn from, interact with the instructor of the video, they can give you critique and feedback, and also you can interact with a wonderful community that can also give you feedback and encouragement on the whole process. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule, so if you're worried about time management, you can work on these classes with whatever schedule or skill level you have. It is very intuitive and I just think in general it's great to try to occupy your time with some, some level of creative project. With Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to express your creativity. One class that I recommend for you is Illustrating and Procreate Drawing a Shareable Time Lapse by Vashti Harrison. Procreate is definitely up and coming and very popular right now as a portable and easy to use digital painting medium and it's something that I use basically daily so Procreate classes are always helpful and this is such a cute class that also teaches you how to build a beautiful magical painting which is kind of tied to what I'm going to be talking about. If you're interested in trying Skillshare out, I will have a free trial of premium membership in the description for the first thousand of my subscribers so you can explore your own creativity. And once that trial is over, it is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting me and helping me put out videos for you guys. My very first tip is to consider your color palette. I often paint with some very pale creams and pale tones, pinks, blues, whenever I want a dreamy effect. In this painting, I'm painting Elsa from Frozen. She's a very light-skinned, pale lady. If you're going to paint somebody with pale, like, Germanic features, that can allude to Germanic fairy tales like the Grimm's Brothers, and that's, like, an easy hack for painting something that looks very dreamy, nostalgic fairy tale. However, <laughs> of course, I'm not saying that you only need to be painting pale people. Whenever you're painting anybody with darker features or a different ethnicity, you have to be conscious about the colors that you're choosing for your painting so that everything can still look light, creamy, and dreamy. So contrast is always good to keep in mind since my subject here, Elsa, is very pale. I gave her a dark background. If you're going to be drawing somebody who is darker, giving them a softer, lighter background can help complement the tones and not give the image a very dark look. On the flip side, if I was painting this painting of Elsa with a really light background as a very light character, it would be a little bit washed out and it wouldn't stand out as much as the contrast helped it. And so just keep color palettes in mind. Have some very pale, dreamy, glowy elements to your piece. If it's not skin, have it be hair or clothing, even backgrounds. And make sure to use soft tones, not a lot of contrast in that piece. So don't add harsh shadows and make the subject look well lit. Secondly, flow is really important in hair, in clothing, and in posture. Think about your painting as a photo that you've captured really candidly. While your subject can still be looking at the viewer, you want to have some disheveled elements like stray hairs, wrinkles in the clothing, just things that aren't perfect, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I like to paint hair with lots of movement to look like it's floating in the wind. I just think that looks very unstaged and it adds a little bit more realism to your piece. 
Also, having something that's really flowy and bouncy will help look like the character is floating. So in general, what I do is I paint hair with a lot of movement that kind of looks like it's floating. You can do the same thing with posture by having very soft curves in the posture and making sure that the face has soft elements, the arms, hands, the body isn't in like a rough angular pose, that it's just kind of flowing. That will definitely help it look so dreamy, so nostalgic, just kind of effortlessly floating. My third tip is to add rosy elements to the face. It can help to create a more youthful and inviting glow. Uh, again, you don't have to paint only pale people to add rosy elements. You can add plum colored cheeks, nose and lips to darker skin tones, and it's still going to look as beautiful. But just in general, glowy cheeks, noses, and lips all help the subject to look youthful and magical. That ties into the fourth tip, which is glows. Think about the rim lights around the hair, catch lights in the eyes, dewy skin, and glossy lips. Those are all things I add to most of my paintings. I understand that this might look trendy to some people, but I mean, those are all characteristics. I mean, not the rim light, but large open eyes, dewy skin, glossy lips. Those are all things that are like found in babies. They look very natural and like cute and glowy. Babies are the epitome of youth. <laughs> so just, <laughs> the weirdest sentence to ever say um so those are all things you can add to your painting to just have it look so dreamy and nostalgic you can also add little sparkles that look like fireflies that's something that i add to basically every painting or drawing and people often comment about it you can also add like glitter snowflakes dusts that catch the light that's something that i love to do is when i'm painting something that wouldn't you know have snow in it or even fireflies Having little dust that catch the light can just have it be so dreamy. When light's streaming through your window and there's little dust particles in the air, that's just cute. <laughs> just uh, think about adding that to your paintings. And lastly, you can use effects to push the feeling. Since you're working digitally, there are tons of effects you can add to your painting to push the feeling. Light leaks, flares, blurs like the radial blur I added to the snowflakes in this image, and lastly, grain. I think all of these things can add some dimension, interest, and an old-timey look to your piece and I personally love adding some flares and grain especially to my paintings. I think grain just makes everything look lived in and really homey, nostalgic, and magical. In summation, I think it's really important to create an image that looks lived in so if you think about all of my tips it creates this lived in look that's nostalgic don't focus on perfection or precision in this piece that's not what this is about but rather on something that looks like a nostalgic snapshot i really wanted to paint elsa in my own style because i think she's a really cute character but i wanted to add a lot more dreamy elements to her to make this piece kind of look like an 80s glowy photo and i'm really pleased with the end result i took my time on every single aspect of this piece Usually I will focus on the face and then not really pay a lot of attention to the hair or the clothes and in this piece I <laughs> took a lot of breaks to walk around and come back to this piece work on the hair with the most effort <laughs> and like Interest as possible so that I could create a really beautiful piece If you like this piece, this is December's patreon postcard. It's limited edition If you guys really like this, I can make this available as a print in my shop but for the meantime, it's just a Patreon postcard, so if you want to get one, you can sign up on my Patreon. It's going to be linked down in the description. I talked so much. I appreciate you being here watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any tips yourself on how to create dreamy, glowy um, portraits, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. I read all your comments and I would love to hear your thoughts on everything that I said. I hope your December is really great and cozy, as good as it can be, and stay safe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!